do you have a gifted child? Have you been blessed with an empathic, highly sensitive, psychic, or otherwise gifted child? You're going to love today's episode of Heart Magic. Welcome, and my name is Lisa Black. I'm a heart healer, a highly sensitive empath who has a superpower of being able to read hearts. It's my complete joy uh, to serve my clients to know the truth of who they are and live in a way that honors that and honors their sacred soul purpose. Today, this is such an important conversation because there's something going on in my life right now that is directly impacting this story and this intention to teach this today. My little girl is four and I just had a beautiful lunch date with our friend whose little girl is very good friends with my little girl and they play together. And um, what is so, so fascinating is to hear back what has happened for my friend's child since playing with my little girl. And I just express this with so much joy and appreciation at my little girl that a couple of months ago she's highly sensitive and empathic meaning that she feels everything very very deeply she can feel what other people feel and that when she does feel emotion she feels them very deeply she's also highly sensitive to sound highly sensitive to light and highly sensitive to other people's perceptions of her so what we do in our home is we are very, very gentle, very honoring um, and very permissive of Bo. We support her to do things in the way that she needs because her gifts give her a completely different experience to some other children. So honoring this little girl is just so, so important. Uh, but a few months ago, she really was struggling with very, very emotional outbursts, either getting very, very sad and upset and crying and screaming and not being able to be placated or pacified, shall we say. Uh, and then on the other side is that she was having really angry outbursts where she would really, really rip up my pot plant or kick things or throw things. And it's very, very tempting to want to judge this behavior as wrong or bad. But you and I both know that when we see this type of behavior in our children, we know that something's not okay. And what was not okay for my little girl is that when she felt these feelings so, so deeply, she didn't know what to do with them. And they were actually puppeteering her body. And so hurting my plant or kicking something was a way of just allowing that energy to move through her. But it's obviously not the best way because it's hurting her and it wasn't actually releasing the emotion. We experimented with a few different approaches. We, she came up with the idea of stomping outside, uh, which I supported her in, or going for a run outside, um, but that didn't actually hit the spot. And what we found was that I really encouraged her that when she was feeling something really big, not to go to dad, <laughs> but to come to me. And if I was available to be able to just come and tell me what she was feeling, and this has worked perfectly for her and for me, that when she can come and she can tell me that she's really sad or upset or angry, I'm just able to be there with her in that feeling. If you have a deeply feeling child, so important to have a space where they are simply permitted to feel. It's very, very common for adults to want to stop our children from feeling certain negative feelings. Unfortunately, all this does is that it makes them a stigma and it makes them more sticky emotions that children are afraid to move into and that they find difficult to move out of. The more acceptance and the more we can embrace and be with our feelings, the quicker they pass. So two-year-olds, three-year-olds are actually absolutely brilliant uh, transmuters of emotion. They're able to just go in and pop out the other side really magnificently. Uh, they start learning from four and onwards how to augment their emotions and how to press some down and how to make them not okay, which can cause behavioral challenges in the future that many of us see adults struggling with to this day. What's really beautiful was that as my little girl really experienced the contrast of feeling a really big feeling coming up and feeling really safe to come to me and share that and allow herself to receive me really holding her and just being with her in that experience. And what that has actually done is it's helped her to feel safer. It's helped her to feel like it's okay for her to feel these really big feelings. And what's so profound for me is that these are the many of the things that I'm actually supporting my clients to work through when they come and hire me for a heart healing session is learning 
actually how to sit with and be with our own feelings is a very pivotal skill that many adults don't actually have. And I never thought I would be teaching this to my three or four year old, but uh, it was exactly what she needed as well. <clears throat> now, I didn't know what would happen was that my dear friend's little girl is also highly sensitive and empathic and struggles with really big feelings. Now, what I didn't know is that when my little girl goes over for play dates, sometimes two or four hours, she loves spending time with her little bestie. My little girl has actually been teaching her dear friend how to be with her feelings and how to talk about them with Bo in a way that they can share it together. And I'm, I can't not get a little bit emotional about this because I never intended that my little four-year-old girl would actually be sharing her wisdom and her knowing with somebody else. And so my dear friends I had lunch with today just said, whoa, like it's just been amazing what your daughter has done for my daughter. Uh, her behavior has completely improved and we're seeing so much more responsiveness. Um, we're seeing her not escalate so much. So she was thanking me and I'm just like, it's Bo, do you know what I mean? It's my little girl doing doing what she's here to do, bringing her love through in her own authentic way. And so I wanted to share this with you and talk a little bit about um, three of the biggest points. I wish every parent knew, whether you're gifted or not as a parent, obviously everyone watching my channel is gifted, so hello, gifted soul. Uh, and many of us as gifted souls are actually blessed uh, to be able to raise or adopt beautiful other gifted souls ourselves. And... I just want to talk very briefly about three of the most powerful ways that we can actually respond to these children in order to serve and support them. The first one is to respect their perspective. When we're able to respect the perspective of our gifted child, we're actually validating that what they're perceiving is accurate, that it's real, and that it's valid. And that is just so, so crucial for them to be able to trust themselves, for them to be able to trust their gifts. And what's really difficult is that all of us have very contrasting, very unique spiritual gifts. And just because our child is able to perceive something, it can often be the case that we're not able to perceive that in the same way. And therefore, as an adult talking to a child, it's very easy to discount that experience and to actually rule it out and write it off. Unfortunately, though this is rational and logical and that if we can't perceive that it isn't there is the logic that we tend to lean on, the reality is, is that that child will internalize your dismissal of their perception as a dismissal of who they are. Okay, and so I just really want to emphasize it's so important to respect their perspective, even if it's not your perspective. So, so important to be able to just hear them out and be able to understand that what they're relaying is important, that they have perceived it, and you don't need to make it real or you don't need to verify that or um, you don't need to have perceived it for yourself in order to listen to their perception. So see how that feels for you, if it resonates and if it vibes for you. Um, <clears throat> second one, really, really important, is offer them safety to express. So in these first kind of pivotal sharings that will commonly be happening around three, four, and five, if not earlier, um, what your child will be coming to you to express could be strange or unfamiliar to them, or they could be so accustomed and acclimatized to it that they just share some information with you that you are not acclimatized and adjusted to. And this can be a little bit shocking once we realize that our child has been perceiving something for a very long time. Um, so, so important that our children feel really safe, that when they are experiencing or perceiving something, that there is safety with us to be able to simply express that and verbalize it. Many gifted children are actually in a position of perceiving some very, very, um, how shall I say it, big, sacred, important, um, yeah, I like big, like they're accessing some really, really big information. And when we're accessing big information as adults, it can be really, really comforting and supporting to actually have someone that you can express and share that with. So just the same for little children, having a safe space where you can actually come and you can actually relate what you're perceiving or what you're experiencing and seeing or sensing or knowing is so, so vital for them to be able to trust and know that their perception is real and that it is valid and that it is worthy of being heard, shared, and understood. Uh, third principle, and I think this is an invitation. Obviously, I am no expert. I am just here to relay in my own experience 
the best way that I have found to serve and support myself to deepen into my gifts and likewise to serve and support my beautiful two children. I've worked with many women over the years who all of my clientele are gifted, but some of them have come to me with behavioral problems that are manifesting in their children. And often I'm confirming the spiritual gifts in those children that manifest as behavioral problems uh, that are not behavioral problems. And so this third one is an invitation. Okay. I go, the first two are going to be um, really applicable to everyone. And the third one I kind of feel is optional and it might not resonate for you. But what I'm going to suggest is that you believe their perception, even if you don't believe it's real. Okay. So when your child is coming to you and relaying that they've seen something or they've sent something or they've heard something, um, even if you don't believe the information that they're sharing, I want to invite you to believe that what they're perceiving was real for them. And this might not align with your personal paradigm. It not, might not align with your spiritual, non-spiritual, religious, non-religious beliefs. Nevertheless, I just want to put it forward to you. Because what can happen for many gifted children is that when they share experiences that are not believed by others, that these children will invalidate the information and that when they invalidate that information, they're actually invalidating their access to information, their perceptual, um, I guess, mode of, of accessing what they can perceive is something that they may shut off or repress. Now, the reason why this is actually so dangerous for these beautiful children is that I love teaching and sharing that our spiritual gifts are innately connected with the truth of who we are. And I believe that all healing is a process of returning to the truth of who we are. And that if we do not allow our gifts to be fully present in our lives and fully utilized and embraced, that that will create health, behavioral, mental, and emotional problems in the future in one way shape or another and this is not a threat this is not if you do this is going to happen but I guess as a heart healer uh, over the last three years I've been privileged to stand beside so many adults so many women so many men and what I've really noticed is that if I can get this information out and the right people can hear it that gives us such an advantage in how we respond and treat our beautiful children so that we can give them the very best advantage and the very best nurturing and grounding for them to rise as powerful, loving, wise adults in this world. And if you're with my channel and you're with me, you're probably going to be resonating with that. Um, how has this vibe for you? I would absolutely love to hear your perception on this. Uh, do you have a gifted child? Are you gifted yourself? Do you resonate with these three principles that we need to respect their perspective, we need to offer them safety to express, and that we need to believe their perception even if we don't believe that it is real? Okay, I don't know how it's a paradox, <laughs> it's a paradox, but I want to invite you into that paradox. And uh, thank you so much for being here and for marinating with me over the ways that we can raise our gifted children so that we can give them the very best start for a beautiful life on this magical star. Um, if you are a healer or a helper, if you're one of these beautiful, gentle, gifted hearts uh, that is coming to my channel for the very first time, thank you. If you want to hear more about how we can truly heal our own hearts, rise up in our purpose and make a difference with our presence, with our, with our being. I'd love to invite you to subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you have found this valuable, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a big thumbs up. It's really nice for me to see what are the topics that my audience really wants to hear on. Um, what are the things that I can share that will really serve and support people the most? So often the videos that I see that get the most likes are topics that I'm going to later on deepen into and share more on um, in another way. So I would love your feedback. Uh, I always love connecting with people all around the world. Sacred gifted hearts are just so, so important for me. I love serving you all and I know personally how isolated and alone, abandoned and outcast we can actually feel on this planet. And I have so much compassion for what I passed through as a little girl and for what I know many are passing through on the planet right now. I love offering a lot of safety, a lot of compassion, and I love being able to intuitively bring forward sacred guidance to be able to help us find our own alignment to be able to speak our truth and to be able to feel really safe being who we are thank you so much for being here i've absolutely loved this time with you and i hope that something i've shared
shed on how we can raise gifted children has been able to resonate, serve and support you. I'll be back next Monday with the next episode of Heart Magic Monday. I hope to see you then. Mwah.